Hi and welcome back everybody. This is Molt Media. I hope you are having a fantastic day out there. I want to first start off by saying thank you for everyone in this community that has shown me love and support over the past week. As you know, um, or many of you know, I'm sure uh, my brother did pass last week. He took his life. Uh, got a tremendous amount of support. As you can see, the last video I did five days ago, got 545 likes and 360 comments. I appreciate the support from every single one of you and don't think that I do not read your comments because I absolutely do. And it is extremely nice to know that there are caring, good people out there. But I am back today to do some more content and I'm going to start giving you your daily feed of content on XLM, XRP, HBAR, Quant, XDC. We're going to talk about all the coins that I typically talk about. Haven't obviously been feeling very well, haven't been able to keep a clear mind and haven't had a whole lot to say because of the passing of my brother, but now I want to get into it. Now we know that this came out on April 24th recently that Franklin Templin announced Franklin on-chain U.S. government money fund surpassed $270 million in assets under management. This was an absolutely big deal, but was I surprised? Not necessarily. This is the U.S., the first U.S. registered mutual fund to process transactions and record share ownership on Stellar blockchain. So, clearly a massive big deal but what i've been saying for some time well over two years i know danielle dixon and the stellar development foundation have been working extremely close with the united states regulators and now we see that things are absolutely heating up as the u.s house will have crypto bail in two months mchenry says now patrick mchenry i think many of you uh, remember this name I did cover what he had to say to Gary Gensler when they had the House Financial Services Committee basically grilled him and said, "You look, you're a complete failure with the SEC. You have no idea how to run the organization and you're just going after crypto companies basically to benefit your own self and the fat cats on Wall Street that we all know your friends of. He says, this is an industry that has innovation and will uh, provide many with jobs and, and so forth. And so he is above, I want you to all to understand, he is far and away above Gary Gensler. He is essentially, in a way, Gary Gensler's boss. So what he says matters in a big way. What the House of Financial Service Committee says matters in a big way. And so when they say in the next two months they're going to put out some crypto legislation and we know that he is pro-crypto, that is a very, very good sign and has me more bullish than ever. So we look at Stellar XLM, we take a look at it under 10 cents. Where do I see this coin going? Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there about the Stellar XLM Lumen because you have a lot of influencers out there, or YouTubers, whatever you want to call them, that are saying, look, Stellar is using USDC, they're using the Stellar network, but they aren't really using XLM. So where will the value come in? Well, they're sadly mistaken in a big way because XLM Lumen is the native token for the Stellar network. Therefore, anytime the Stellar blockchain is being utilized, indirectly XLM is being utilized. In fact, as you can see right here, you need Lumens to use Stellar. It is an absolute must. Every single account that is on Stellar will have to buy into the Lumen. And so you have that and then obviously as you see the market become more bullish and you see uh, institutions come into the market and mass adoption and all that good stuff, they're going to take a look at what ne networks are being utilized all over the world. Stellar is one of the big dogs out there that is in countries all over the world. And once we get that clarity, once we get that clarity from the U.S. House and they say, look, XRP, XLM, all these solid digital assets that are ISO compliant, in fact, are commodities, 
then you will see money dump into coins like Stellar XLM like you have never seen before. Now we know that Stellar had a massive run in 2017 where they just had an absolute pop. We know that this moves fast. These coins can move fast. So when we take a look at this two months away, what could potentially happen to the Stellar Lumen in two months? You could see this, you could see this go berserk upward in a massive, massive way. I think that people need to do a little bit more digging deep. They need to dig a little deeper. They need to read the white paper, right? They need to see how Stellar is used for cross-border payments in a multi-trillion dollar cross-border payment uh, business. They need to look at how Stellar is for asset issuance. And so tokenizing the world can be done on Stellar. They also need to look at how that you can access Stellar's on and off ramps with one set of standards. Again, any time Stellar is being utilized, so is XLM. So when we see CBDCs roll out, which I get it is not exactly what we want, but in many countries you will see CBDCs. As long as they're using Stellar, I'm okay. Because as an investor in the XLM Lumen, again, as they move into the Stellar network, they will move into the XLM coin indirectly. Lastly, I wanted to pull this up because this was breaking news on Ripple. Ripple says SEC suffered setback in XRP lawsuit, gives prediction on summary judgment timeline. I'm going to put this in my description as well if you want to go ahead and read the entire article. But essentially what was uh, taken away from this, in recent quarterly report, Ripple stated that SEC had suffered a setback in the lawsuit. According to Ripple, SEC failed to convince the court to provide it with internal documents from RIP. The documents in question are reportedly related to Ripple's legal advice on whether XRP is a security or not. That's all I got for you for now. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to come into this beautiful community. It really is beautiful. Again, I appreciate the love and support. Still working my way through this. I don't anticipate the pain going away anytime soon. Any of you out there that have lost a loved one know that this is unfathomable. It's hard to cope with, and I am still in somewhat of a state of shock. But again, I do appreciate the love and support, and I will see you all in the next video.